gave a presentation on the outlook for 2023. What can we expect ahead for Hawaiian Airlines? Well, I think it's going to be a very uh, busy year. We've had a lot of last couple of years we've talked about recovery and um, really things are largely recovered now it's about getting back and running a, a really good airline uh, delivering on our promises to our uh, guests and uh, getting back to running efficient so that we can uh, can restore our profitability and and continue to reinvest in the business on behalf of our guests you had spoken about specifically Honolulu um, International Airport and Maui Airport having some challenges in regards to TSA lines and construction underway. Can you touch upon that just a little bit? Yeah, it, it is. You know, it's no secret um, that we've had challenges with congestion in our lobby for a number of years in Honolulu, and I was. Uh, reviewing in the presentation a number of investments we're making to make that a better experience for our guests. Uh, and now here in, in Maui, uh, we saw you know, very long lines at the TSA at peak periods uh, last year. And we know that there's some investments that need to be made in the infrastructure. And we're going to work with the TSA and with the State Department of Transportation to make sure those investments get made. In the interim, we've got to make the best of the facilities we've we have and try and be as efficient as possible. And so it's, it's really just about acknowledging the fact that, that there are, are always areas where we want to make our guest experience better and we've got to continue to invest and work with our partners uh, to make sure that's happening. I also heard you mention a partnership with Amazon. Can you tell us how that's going to work out, when it's going to start and who's involved? Yeah, so for us it feels like it started already, but we haven't actually flown any flights for Amazon yet. But uh, we're going to be uh, responsible for flying 10 aircraft and potentially more in the future for Amazon, flying uh, parcels between their distribution centers on the mainland and here in Hawaii. Uh, the, uh, the deal lasts for eight years and it can grow, so it's an exciting opportunity of growth uh, for us and, and as a result of that we're going to be continuing to hire more pilots, more mechanics, people to support that operation and it helps us diversify uh, our business and, uh, and is an exciting opportunity. A, a lot of that work has been underway already. The flying is not going to start until this fall uh, but we've got um, dozens of employees working throughout our company to make sure we've got the plans in place to execute on that well. This past year, you ramped up with the um, post-COVID situation. There was a lot of flights that resumed service. Can you just give us an overview of um, the airlines that are now in operation and what you plan into 2023 if some of those are returning as well? Sure. I mean, over the course of uh, 2022, we restored most of our international network. Domestic was up and running before that, but internationally this year, uh, we ramped up. Sydney and Australia, we've, we brought uh, Auckland, New Zealand back onto our network. We've um, increased our service into Seoul, South Korea. Um, Jap in Japan, where the post-COVID reopening has happened later, uh, we have now got a daily flight to Haneda, Osaka, and Narita, so three destinations in Japan. Over time, uh, as Japan fully recovers, we're going to get back to Fukuoka and get back to Sapporo and fully restore our network in uh, Japan. Uh, and then we're always looking for new places to uh, fly. And as we get the 787 at the end of, uh, of this year and start flying it next year, that's going to give us some growth opportunities and we'll be looking for that next new um, spot on the map.